Good morning, everyone. My name is Harmeet. I represent Safe Security. Uh, I welcome you to uh, today's conversation on predicting the likelihood of a breach, uh, wherein uh, myself from Safe Security and our very, very valuable partner, Value Point Systems, Mr. Ashok Prabhu uh, from Value Point Systems, will be jointly sharing our views uh, and our learnings uh, based on our customer experiences uh, with all of you, this August audience today on this topic. So uh, I would like to invite Mr. Prabhu uh, on the conversation now and request him to kick off with his, with his uh, starting note. Ashok sir, over to you, please. Thank you so much, Harmit. Uh, first of all, uh, very good morning to all of you. And uh, thank you so much for joining this morning. And um, it's indeed our privilege to have, in fact, uh, uh, Biju also from Federal Bank. So welcome, uh, Biju, and the SAFE team. And uh, I would be uh, setting up the context uh, for about next eight to 10 minutes, just to share with you the, the journey at Valley Point and also uh, what exactly is the strategic nature of engagement that we have with safe security. Now, as you know, uh, Value Point uh, has been in business and uh, I'm very happy to share that we are celebrating our 30th year and that's a significant uh, achievement and it wouldn't have been possible without uh, the support of our customers and our associates and our distributors. So a big thanks to all of you and uh, this is a very momentous occasion for us. Uh, of course, due to pandemic, we have not been able to do any celebrations as such, but definitely it's a big milestone uh, in, in the history of Value Point. Uh, way back uh, uh, around uh, the 10 years ago, when I co-founded and set up with Value Point to set up a dedicated cybersecurity practice, uh, so we had a very fixed vision. The idea was uh, to ensure that how we can really be a relevant, trusted partner to our customers to help them in their overall cybersecurity journey. Being in business for the last three decades, and I have been associated and selling a lot of technology to our customers. But uh, as, the, as you are aware, uh, in, in the current context, there's one thing which is very key is, um, it's just not enough in terms of technology that we deploy, but it's also very important that we, we are able to really uh, give an effective response back to the board in terms of where do we stand in terms of our security posture. So if you really see, we focused on from day one on these three buckets. Now, the, the rightmost one, which is cybersecurity technology practices with which we started. And today we have some robust practices around endpoint security, one of our largest, followed by content security, followed by cloud security, and then network security in that order. So we have, we have built a very strong professional services backbone over the years. And uh, uh, the, the, we have been hearing very actively to our customers, what are the kind of challenges that they look forward to and what kind of a partner they would be looking at uh, in terms of partnering with in their cybersecurity journey. One thing which came very, very clear was that how well you could really monitor and help us with our security posture. And uh, can you offer the continuous security monitoring in terms of uh, the security threat landscape? And also, could you drive a roadmap for us in terms of our security in the, in the, for, for a period of say next three years and be relevant here? So we were thinking a lot and uh, uh, we set up our CSOC uh, a couple of years ago and very happy to share that we have 20 plus customers today where we offer SOC as a service and also device management as a service. But we were still hungry in terms of how we can really make this a very compelling value proposition to our customers. Now that's where we, uh, we partnered with SAFE uh, to address the top portion, the cybersecurity risk management and compliance portion. But today we are heavily focused around the predicting the likelihood of breach. Now, every one of you are aware that it has been a very uh, difficult times in the past couple of years. And there have been lots of lots of breaches that have happened in the, in the, uh, in the uh, customer arena. And one of the significant challenges when I was talking to a lot of customers as to what does really mean to them in terms of breach. There are a few customers whom I spoke to them who got breached. So there are two things which came out very, very strong from their side. The number one, when did when the breach when they were able when they could find out that there is something wrong, they they did not know whom to reach out to. So this is really a big challenge which customers faced in terms of their incident response readiness. So we 
are very sensitive to the fact that we have been recommending to our customers that kindly ensure that you have a proper emergency response uh, relationship and also an incident response retainership because you never know some of these attacks that have happened have happened at very odd hours and that too during weekends. So it's a very important uh, uh, concern that the customers have been sharing and we have been getting up in terms of recommending our customers the, the exact readiness on that side. That's the first point. The second thing was, moment there is uh, an issue or a moment there is a breach, the first question that comes is how did this happen? Or why did this happen? So the board immediately comes back and says, uh, what happened? So that's one side of the thing. So which really motivated us to really offer the value proposition to our customers. And that's where we felt SAFE could really answer some of the challenging questions that is throwing, thrown out by the risk committee or by the board, right? One of the first things is there has been a lot of investment made on cybersecurity, right? So the question would come naturally is that we have done so much of investment. So what is the impact that is made on our risk position? Where are we today? What is our current risk position? Where do we stand? And what is what are the plans to align our current risk position to our risk appetite? This is a very important point. Not every industry vertical can really look at cybersecurity and keep on investing a lot in terms of technologies and still trying to aspire that we'll not get breached. It's all about how do you really see an overall posture of your risk and, and you are aware that you have been able to invest a certain set of investments on that and we're able to know the kind of the risk that you are mitigated with your current investments. So that is also an important point. But in security, I'm sure you agree with me, the, the, it's just not about a point in time assessment, right? It's definitely about an ongoing process. So there is nothing going to work in terms of uh, doing a security risk assessment at one go and then at point in time and then say, okay, well, we can probably repeat it after six months. In the current context of threats, it's important that we have a continuous view of our security posture and if the management comes back and asks us that where do we stand, so we have a right answer to give. The cyber insurance is one area where customers have been uh, uh, working heavily on that, and that's another area where customers have been looking at. <laughs> but you would understand when it comes to the ransomware or any of the other aspects, the cyber insurance providers are also tracking their screws in terms of the readiness from a customer in terms of their controls and their policies and procedures. So the obvious challenge is if we have been doing a risk assessment based on a spreadsheet, I, I'm, I, I'm personally of the opinion that it doesn't really give a true view of the organization's risk because that doesn't really take a threat information into the account. Unless you are aware of your uh, threat information which is being fed into the, uh, uh, the central posture, you would not be able to assess where do you really stand. And if there are no regular updates on risk posture, it's again a very big challenge for a customer uh, to report back to their management. Right. So, as I mentioned, it's important to know the understanding of the value of the risk mitigator so that you can exactly know where you need to invest and then what you can really come forward with. So, with the third party risk breaching, uh, breaches, uh, third party uh, 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 breaches, the, the, at any point of time, if you wish to assess what is the kind of an impact my organization is having, it's also a very important aspect. Right. So, uh, <laughs> at value point, we have been uh, offering the managed security services now for over two years and we have got significant uh, feedbacks from our customers. One of the things that really uh, uh, is helping uh, us today with the safe security is that we have done deployments on SIM. There, is a, uh, there are a lot of customers who contemplated deploying a GRC framework, but you would agree with me that they are pretty complex. They, they, they are time consuming, right? And uh, uh, the value that we saw with SAFE is that we are able to showcase the value and their risk posture from the day one of the deployment. Now, if imagine that you would, you would work with value point in terms of your cybersecurity initiatives. So what we can offer to you is a roadmap over three years as to say, where do you stand in terms of cybersecurity and what kind of a maturity is where you're in today. And with the kind of services that we offer, with the integrated offering. For example, we, with the SAFE, we are able to tell you about the, the complete posture, the security risk posture of your organization, help you talk about your people maturity, help you talk about your compliance uh, level status, help you talk about third party risk, help you talk about the technologies that you need 
uh, uh, to improve your posture. Imagine if I am able to tell you where does your technology implementation stand today in terms of gaps. There are a lot of things that really make a lot of uh, relevance in the conversation today. So with our technology background and uh, with our ability to offer 24 bar 7 security monitoring services. And if we are able to offer uh, our customers that their security roadmap in terms of their cyber risk and help them effectively articulate their posture and maintain it on an ongoing basis, we think that that's, that's going to be a win-win situation for a lot of us. So that's the context on which we have aligned our uh, relationship with safe security. And uh, it's definitely a strategic one. And it comes in as a, an add-on engagement for our current uh, managed security services customers. So you can consume this technology part of our services contract with you as an add-on module. Uh, uh, or we, we also be linked to discuss this uh, with you on a standalone mode as well, right? So in all, uh, the, the thought process at value point is that how we can be relevant to you in your cybersecurity journey, whether it is a technology, whether it is people process, or whether it is going to be operations. Now, that has been the initiative. I've been personally been there for selling a lot of technologies, but I'm pretty happy that the way we have been uh, trying to listen to our customers for feedback, because we remain humble, and that's something which is making us grow significantly. In fact, just to uh, uh, leave you with the note that it has been a fantastic journey for us at cybersecurity at Valley Point. So we grew our business uh, uh, 2x in the last year. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, today we are close to 350 plus customers specifically for cybersecurity. And we have um, uh, our cybersecurity, um, uh, the Cyber Defense Center in Bangalore. We have close to 25 plus analysts today. And uh, we are 100 plus member technical team in cybersecurity today. And uh, uh, to be honest, uh, we have been doing averaging around 50 plus tech security projects in a an year. And uh, we have close to 90 plus technology certifications that we have today. And we have moved into a state of art facility in Jainagar, Bangalore in terms of our facility. And we'd be happy to host of, uh, many of you uh, at our uh, Cyber Defense Center and uh, happy to discuss your security roadmap. So with that, I would like to hand this back over to Harmit to take over the proceeds. And I hope you have a great session this morning. And once again, thank you so much for joining. Over to you, Hamid. Thank you so much, Ashok, sir. It's it's always great to listen to your, your opening note. And this is uh, this one has been no, no different. Uh, I, I welcome the audience back into the session from my, my personal side as well. Uh, our relationship with Value Point over the last two years, uh, where we have tried to build this relationship, is uh, growing stronger by the day. We have joint customers where we have delivered safe as a project. Uh, uh, they're extremely happy customers. Uh, they have come back with references. So it's, it's a delight to work with a partner like Value Point who has the capabilities that you have and who understands cybersecurity uh, to a very, in a very different way. Uh, in, in my job, I deal with many, many partners. Uh, it happens very few number of times that a partner would actually stop you and tell you, listen, uh, you know, one of the common mistakes that vendors make is that they want to go to a customer and they want to tell the customer that my product can do 20,000 things and my product can solve all your problems. But that's not the case. Even customers do not believe that. And it was his wisdom and his experience of work, having worked with 350 customers, which made at least me realize uh, that, yes, it's important to pick up uh, an area of strength. And if that area of strength is relevant to the customer's current requirements, then that possibly can bring a nice combination together. And therefore, uh, what Ashok sir did over the last 10 minutes was to share that what is the present state of the cybersecurity market? What are the challenges of today? Uh, my attempt would be uh, over the next 20 to 25 minutes, my attempt would be to take you into the past of cybersecurity and possibly into the future of cybersecurity. That where have we come from as, as the entire construct of practitioners like customers like yourself, vendors, people like me who have been selling Checkpoint and F5 earlier, or some of the other colleagues have been selling other products. And where the market is headed, what are we learning from, from, the, from the matured customers or from the matured markets in the world? And, and so that's, that's my attempt so that we can, as a group between value point and safe security, we can give you the past, the present and future view, and then help you make some intelligent decisions around, around your cybersecurity posture and your journey. So uh, I will quickly uh, like to start and I'll keep on jumping between a presentation and the actual product to, to establish my, 
my stride content. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to start with this example, which happened in 1942 when Albert Einstein was teaching at Oxford and he was responsible for teaching the senior class of physics students. So one day he gave them an exam. And uh, later that evening, his assistant, uh, Professor Einstein's assistant asked him that, uh, isn't this the same exam you gave to the, to the same group of people one year back? So Einstein said, yes, of course, it's the same exam. So the, the assistant said that I'm not able to understand what would be the sense in doing that because they already know all the answers. So Einstein said that uh, it's true that they know uh, the answers, but uh, while the questions have remained the same, the answers have changed. And, and this is the construct with which we look at cybersecurity that uh, when customers started investing in cybersecurity 40 years back when this, this domain, this industry uh, you know, took, took its you know, baby steps, there were always two questions. You know, there were always two questions for making any investment into cybersecurity. The first question was a customer would invest into cybersecurity over the last 40 years and presumably over the next 40 as well, this should not change, is that the customer does not want to get breached. But because of the, the state of the market, what, what Ashok has shared, so many breaches happening, best-in-class companies who have already deployed best-in-class technology, who have best-in-class processes, um, trained people, audits done by big fours, et cetera, all that happened, but this still got breached. So something was at work, which, which is saying, which is telling us that just keeping a lens of that, I want to build my security environments that I do not get breached is no longer a worthy target of being, being, being pursued because one would get breached because cybersecurity is no longer an industry. It's actually also a game, right? Uh, the, the attacker has to become successful only once and the defender has to become successful every single time. So, there is also a second reason why security investments are made. And that second reason, which is becoming more and more important today, therefore the, the, the needle of conversations is moving away from cybersecurity to cyber risk. That if I were to get breached, then what is at risk for me? So let's say I do get breached and the hacker is able to find something in my environment, which is of no value to me. Then in that case, I don't mind getting breached. But if the hacker is able to come in and get something of intense value to my organization, then only I have a problem. So the decisions are morphing into not only that I do not want to get breached, I also want to work in a way that if I get breached, I should have my minimum risk, which is what risk appetite, risk tolerance is all about. That I can only afford a risk of $5,000 or $50,000 or $5 million, depending on the organization. So I want to keep my risk low. And the risk is not only financial, of course, most of us know that risk can also be regulatory <clears throat> for organizations operating in very, very regulated environments. That's a very, very important thing. And then it can also be reputational. So the, the, the context from where safe security began, the thought process of safe security to come into existence is this. If breachability and risk are the two reasons why an organization would invest into security, then how do they know what is their breachability? And how do they know what is their risk? And also how do they show it across to the entire organization or for whoever security is relevant? So I'm sure today, all of us on this audience, on this panel agree that cybersecurity impacts the entire organization from top to bottom, right? It's something which also has national significances now, right? And we are seeing what's happening and people are saying that the next war will not be fought in a battlefield, it will be fought in cyber world, right? So that's the impact that cybersecurity has on us or cyber uh, criminalism has on us, right? So for organizations who are concerned about breachability and risk, how do they know how breachable they are and what is their risk? And how, if a technical person can go into that organization, go into this conversation, path of discovering what is my breachability and risk, he can still find it. But then how does he convey this to a CEO? How does he convey this to a CFO? How does, how does he convey this to a shareholder, right? This is the problem that we are increasingly hearing from the customers worldwide, that I want to have a way to know what's my breachability and risk, and I want to have a way to show it to my entire organization internally or externally, and even to my customers. Now, there is an impact of not knowing how breachable you are and what is your risk. And I've tried to represent that concern 
or that impact in four simple questions. So as a cybersecurity practitioner, whether you are a CIO, whether you are responsible for security or you are a CISO, or you are from the operations side, if the, the fundamental question is, do we know, can you find out that what is the possibility of a successful breach in my environment? And when I say possibility, I mean, what is the likelihood? So can I say that my environment, I am aware that it is 40% breachable or it is 90% breachable. Right? Can we have a metric like that, which can help us to gauge in a very, very tangible, in a very, very quantifiable way that what is the likelihood of a breach in my environment? And this question in, in a standalone, as a standalone question is not very meaningful because as I said, let's say I come and tell you that you are 90% breachable. Your logical next question will be, okay, if the hacker is inside my environment now, what do I have to lose? So if you have nothing to lose, if you have no IP, if you have no customer data, if you have no PCI, PII, PHI data, and you don't care, then it doesn't matter if the hacker came in and breached you because there's nothing for you to lose. So you'll have a different perspective. But if I were to come and tell you that you are at a 70% chance of being breached, and if the breach happens, you're sitting on a $25 million loss, that possibly would initiate a different behavior or a different reaction. And that's the space where we are heading into. That's the value that we bring on the table along with our partner, that we can help you understand what is the possibility of a successful breach in your environment. And we can help you find out the real business impact of that breach in your environment as well. And we don't stop there, obviously, because telling has some value, but a greater value lies in helping you in a way, in a very tangible, meaningful, accountability-based way, where you can go ahead and do some activities as a customer or make some investments as a customer to knowingly, proactively reduce both the possibility of a breach in the environment as well as the impact, the business impact of that breach in your environment. So this is what we are set out to do and, and uh, why this is important is because today, most of the customers, whether they are on top of the maturity curve or even if they are not on top of the maturity curve, most customers have are evolving to a single expectation, uh, which I'll just share. And this expectation is coming because they have spent so much of money on cybersecurity over the last five to 10 years, and they have not seen any return of investment on the cybersecurity investment. Therefore, their expectation is becoming that just like anybody can understand, even I can understand anything about the financial health of my company by looking at my last four quarters or last four years balance sheet. And I can know that by looking at the financial balance sheet, I can know that my, whether my health is good, whether my health is bad, is, and, and what can I do to improve what part of my health if something is really critically bad? Because if things like gross profit, gross margins, and EBITDA are bad, then something definitely has to be done. But let's say if the revenue came down, but the profitability went up, it is still okay. You know, so those kind of metrics can be read out of the financial balance sheet by anybody. You don't need to be a PhD in finance to be able to today read a balance sheet. In a similar way, customers are expecting that we need a very simple way to represent cybersecurity health of my organization and the risk on my organization, whether that is required to be submitted or whether that is required to be consumed by my internal stakeholder, uh, employee on the shop floor or, or a person in the marketing team or person in the sales team or whether it's my external stakeholder, my, my shareholder or my board member or my investors. And, and I'm very delighted to share that this is an actual excerpt from uh, one of our first customers annual shareholder report where, where the managing director of the company went ahead and said and, and addressed the shareholders and said that this is the financial, this is the security health of my organization. We started on this maturity, security maturity journey. Uh, Ashok sir mentioned about the journey and the roadmap. So at an executive level, the CISO of this organization enabled his managing director to represent cybersecurity posture or cybersecurity health to the shareholders of the company by just this single diagram. And this was published as part of their annual shareholder report, where they said that we started on this journey. And uh, when we started, we were not in a very good shape, but then we did some things over a seven month period and then we became in a shape which was acceptable to us and i'm sharing this with you all my shareholders because if you have one more rupee to invest into the stock market uh, you are more confident now that that money invested on me is safer because i am at least risk of a cyber attack 
versus if you go and invest that money in my competitor or anywhere else in the market, the chances that you will lose that money because of a cyber attack impacting the financial, regulatory, or, or reputational health of that organization are very high. But I can at least give you visibility that your, your money is safer with me, right? So this is, this is what our capability uh, put together, the product from safe security and the services on top of that uh, from value point can enable security practitioners to create this kind of impact for their organization. And to do so, we have taken a very simple approach. We have looked at the same model of balance sheets. So we took the learning from there and we said that we want our platform to be the single source of truth for the entire organization when it comes to cybersecurity health. So whatever the CISO or the security practitioner chooses to represent to the organization, based on the unique requirements of the organization, the CISO can present that view to the organization as the single source of truth. So there are no, if there are 20 people responsible or participating in cybersecurity, they don't uh, operate like that example of that, you know, the proverbial example of that elephant in a room with five, with five blindfolded men. Somebody's thinking it's a tree trunk, somebody thinking it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a rope, you know, while touching the feet and the, uh, the legs and the tail of the elephant. So security becomes a single source of truth conversation with our platform. And then, so which helps the customer know what is their security health. And then the security posture or the information about the security health gets represented in a very simple business language. And, that, and there is no simple, simpler business language for business people. And that is the language of numbers and dollars and, and rupees, right? So we have been able to now bring these two thought processes together that to, to help the organization know what is their security, to help the security practitioner know what is their security health, there is a single source of truth and everybody can look at that. And whoever looks at that will be able to see it in the same way like the security practitioner because it's based on a common business language. And that's the platform that we have made, which is called Safe, Secure, which is called Safe. Uh, it's a security assessment framework for, for enterprises. And what we do, while, while uh, you know, I, I'm very, very grateful to Ashok sir for giving me this learning. We can do several things with our platform, but today we want to focus upon the one thing which Ashok sir guided me that in his conversations with customers, this is the one most important thing that customers are asking for. So what we do, we have made this uh, SaaS-based software product, which once deployed in a customer's environment, picks up information, signals, insights around various parts of the security posture. So we look at the cybersecurity awareness of the people from a basic hygiene perspective. Do they understand what is a phishing email? Can they differentiate between a phishing email and a non-phishing email? Simple things like those. How do they understand cybersecurity in context of their job roles and so forth? We help get the understanding of the organization's cybersecurity governance module model, what kind of policies that they, that they have enabled in their organization? Do they have a, a strong backup and restore policy? Do they have a strong password management policy? Do they have a strong remote work, work from workforce policy and so forth? So we look at all that part of the customer's environment and get that insight into the product. We look at the entire technology stack in the organization, all your laptops, all your desktops, servers, storage devices, uh, firewalls, routers, switches, applications, databases, middleware, anything that you call as part of my IT infrastructure. We have the capability to look at that in near real time and take signals and inputs from there and get that into the product, which is the safe product over here. Then we also look at how you have deployed as a customer, how you have deployed your existing cybersecurity land base. How have you deployed your firewalls? How have you deployed your EDR tools? Have you deployed DLP or not? Things like those. We get that in, insight into the tool. And these four elements are more inside the organization, how things are looking inside the house. Then we also look at your third parties. We look at your reputation in the deep dark web. We look at the kind of access that you've given to your third parties and whether they are themselves maintaining a good security posture or not, right? So we look at all these inputs and we call this a 360 degree way of input because we are looking at people, we are looking at process, we are looking at technology, we are looking at internal, we are looking at external. And we are also looking at business context. So we are also looking at the, 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 the uh, dependencies uh, that make you uh, 
attractive or non attractive to a hacker so let's say if you're a manufacturing company you offer a certain level of attractiveness to a hacker but if you're a pharma manufacturer that attractiveness goes very high if you're a bank that offers a very different level of attractiveness to a hacker so we bring all these contexts into our platform and eventually for the sake of today's conversation we give two outputs first is we give a breach likelihood score and we give this score for every employee for every policy for every technology asset for every cyber security product for every third party right and what does the score represent the score is a number on a scale of 0 to 5 which represents the maturity status or the breachability status of that particular asset so which means uh, if i were to give a score to a laptop as 0.1 on a scale of 0 to 5 and to a different laptop i will give a score of 3 on the scale of 0 to 5 i'm saying that the laptop with the score of 0.1 has a very bad security posture it is highly breachable because there are so many gaps in that laptop that if a hacker has access to that laptop which he can easily have because the access is also open then that laptop can be easily compromised however for the other laptop which has a score of 3 on 5 the difficulty level that the hacker will have to access or get into that laptop is far higher so the greater the score the better the security health and the lesser the breachability and the lesser the score it represents a bad security posture and a greater breachability the second thing that we do is also based on customer feedback because customer said that this is good this is very valuable information but i let's say i am in the manufacturing segment or i am in the pharma manufacturing segment and i know that in my entire segment everybody is getting ransomware attacks so i want to know that if a ransomware attack comes in my environment what is the what is the chances that i will get compromised so with your permission i will just take you to the product to just show you some of the things that i just spoke about so for example as i started with something called as a safe score so we give so let's say for this instance which is representing let's say a, a dummy customer assume this was your environment then i would be telling you that you have a very poor security posture today because your score is only 0.34 on 15 september today on a scale of 0 to 5 but you know what one year before today your score was represented by a number which looked much better it was 3 on it was 3.14 on the same same scale which means something happened over the last one year that your security posture deteriorated now what has deteriorated what is making the score 0.34 where is the problem this is coming from the individual scores of people policies technologies cyber security products and third parties so you know that your strongest area right now is third parties all your third parties are non risky right now you don't need to worry most about them you need to also be lesser worried about the people in your organization because you still have a score which is 1.38 on a scale of 0 to 5 but the real weak areas are how your policies have been implemented because that's where the biggest gaps are which can let a hacker to come in for example you might not have implemented a strong password policy so your employees might be using the same password which is there on their social media as well as on their corporate accounts which means if a hacker is able to get access to their, to to an account there then he's able to get into your environment as well your other weak area is how you have deployed your cyber security products and your technology area is not also not too strong so these are the kind of insights that you can get by only looking at the score and now because it is a score you don't need to be a very technology centric person to understand because everybody understands that 0.515 is is bad and 4.515 is good right so this is the first thing so we can give a score for every element in your environment whether uh, it's a laptop or a desktop or a server we can give a score for all your assets on the cloud whether it's a your the assets on aws or azure we can give a, a score for your saas applications as either as a group of application or every single application as a group of laptops or every single laptop uh, your endpoints or middleware your mobile applications we can also go ahead and give you visibility that out of the thousands of things that you can do in your organization today to improve your security posture these are the top four things that you need to do today because the risk sitting in your environment is the highest here why because these problems these configuration issues which are there in your environment 
have publicly available exploits. It's very easy for a hacker. This is the easiest thing for a hacker to go and check in your organization and then compromise you because even a hacker with very less experience can come in because of this uh, gap in your environment. So this is the kind of information that we can give. Also, I was talking about customers who want to know specifically that what is my uh, situation on a ransomware perspective. So we can actually give a visibility. So if this was your organization's representation, I could come and tell you that in your organization, there is a 35% chance that a ransomware attack will become successful. And I will tell you which are the gaps on which stage of the ransomware kill cycle. We can give that visibility to you. And not only that, we can also tell you that how many gaps are there in your environment, how many things are good, how many things are bad. And we can also tell you what do you need to do across people, process, technology, and cybersecurity products to reduce your likelihood of getting breached by ransomware from 35% to let's say 25% or 15% or whatever you think is the right representation of that. So, so, so back, to the, back to the deck, uh, this is the capability that we carry. We can help an organization understand their breach likelihood proactively. That's why we are using the word called predict. We can tell an organization after it got hacked, and that's what we've been doing for a lot of time in our life. We are a 10 year old company where we were doing a lot of services. We don't do those anymore. We leverage the services of our partners. But in our past life, our job was to go to a customer who's already been hacked and tell them why he got hacked. And then we made this product, which can tell you before you get hacked. So the way we do that is by giving the score. So if I give you a score to your organization of, let's say, 1.5 versus 3.5, it just simply means that at 1.5, your chances of getting breached are far higher. And at 3.5, your chances of getting breached are lower. So the objective is that I should keep on increasing the score so that my chances of getting breached are lower. And that's what breach likelihood prediction is all about. So we can give breach likelihood on a per asset basis. So I can give you the breach likelihood for every employee, for every laptop, for every desktop, for every application, for every middleware and so forth. And we can then put these all together and give you a score for an asset group as well. So for example, in some of the banks, they, they choose to go with a use case called crown jewel breachability. So they say, that my core banking application, or in case of a manufacturing customer, it can be my ERP application is the most important thing for me. So I want to focus on that, right? So, so this is what we do. And finally, what this leads to, and I want to hand over to uh, our valuable customer, Mr. Biju from, from Federal Bank after this, but in terms of outcomes, what we are able to deliver to customers, and these are actual customer statements, is the capability to view their cybersecurity or cyber risk posture in a very tangible way wherein we are able to tell a customer that there is a 70% likelihood of you to get breached by ransomware. 35% of your employees are likely to become victims of a phishing attack. You are sitting on a $200 million risk or a $25 million risk. 50% of your critical third parties have a very poor security posture. And because now everything is measurable and everything is predictable, you can actually plan your activities and investments in a way that over a period of time, as a practitioner, you can go back and report to your board or to your leadership that in the last six months, I have reduced my breachability by 27% and I have reduced my cyber risk by 43%. So let's say I have brought down my, my, my likelihood of getting breached from 70% from to maybe now 50% or 40, 47% or 43%. And I brought down my risk from $25 million to let's say $12 million. So these are the kind of conversations that we can help you achieve uh, in your organizations uh, through, our, through our technology. Uh, because we look at the likelihood of breach for technology, process, people, third party. And this, this brings us to aggregate the overall breach likelihood for the organization. Then we marry that information with the information provided by the organization, or we have a way to figure out that what is the impact of the breach? How much money will you lose in case you get breached today? And then we marry these two things together to give you a view which that what is your overall risk and then we help you put, put you on a roadmap of how you can reduce your risk. So what Ashok sir was saying was that we can give you, if we come in today, we can say today you are 80% breachable and you are at a $20 million risk. And we can then chart a journey for you that over the next six months or next one year, let's bring you down from 80% risk to of bre uh, likelihood of breach to 50% breach, likelihood breach. And let's bring your risk down from $20 million to $10 million. Like that kind of a conversation we can have, which is very different from the, traditional cybersecurity conversations that customers and partners have been having. And this, what we believe is the future of 
uh, of, of uh, the cyber security and cyber risk world. So uh, these are the outcomes that we deliver to a customer, helping you identify your risk, helping you prioritize your activity, improve your security posture, and predict the likelihood of a breach in your environment. And, and with that, uh, this is my final slide. So I started with that today. Uh, most of the customers have come and told us that we are struggling with how do I know my cybersecurity posture and how do I show it to my organization? This is our way of helping customers know it as well as show it to their organization. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. I sincerely appreciate uh, the audience here. And with that, without further ado, I want to hand it over to uh, Biju sir. Uh, Biju sir, thank you for being part of the, the conversation today. And uh, I have your slides right here. So you could uh, uh, start with your conversation and you could just prompt me whenever you want me to move to the next one, sir. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Safe, for the opportunity given. Uh, so in the opening remark, uh, Mr. Ashok and then followed by Harmit uh, have spoke a lot about cybersecurity and the need for uh, appropriate uh, assessments and uh, taking adequate measures so uh, I simply cannot disagree with any of the points uh, which were discussed either by Ashok or Harmit. Uh, it's very true uh, that you know, every organization is now aspiring to be more digital to keep abreast of the challenges. So uh, uh, we at Federal Bank are also no different. So we are a pan-India bank with branches across India. We have 1,200 plus branches. Uh, and 1,900 uh, ATMs bar recyclers. And we are one among the top uh, banks where most of the transactions are handled in a digital manner. Currently, we have more than 80% of the transactions conducted digitally, and we aspire to increase that percentage furthermore. So, uh, so we can move to the next slide. Uh, so just like um, uh, Ashok and Harmit mentioned, so every organization that is uh, uh, wanting to move ahead, be ahead among the peers, will be looking at more and more digitization. Uh, and uh, ultimately, the result is that the threat landscape and attack surface are increasing and the chances for cyber attacks are increasing. So uh, we are now in the media seeing every day that one or other organization is getting breached. There's a data leakage at uh, uh, some of the payment card service providers or some of the uh, financial institutions like that. We are seeing that news every day. So we also see news like that and the, there are regular conversations in the dark web uh, about uh, attacks being planned, et cetera, like that. So this, this is a situation which every organization that is uh, now technologically enabled uh, are facing. So Federal Bank or any other bank is uh, not an exception. So um, uh, the points which are mentioned in this slide, unfortunately, that have been well covered by Harmit. Uh, so, uh, so I will just touch upon those points. So some of the uh, challenges uh, as a security officer uh, faces today is that you know, uh, the absence of a unified uh, view and a real-time process, real-time view of the uh, security posture. Uh, so uh, at the same time, you know, I would like to highlight that you know, banks, particularly uh, in India, when it comes to the, when, it, when we say about the cyber security uh, management or about the posture, uh, banks are one among the uh, topmost industry uh, where uh, maximum effort is uh, taken uh, to maintain a higher security posture. Uh, it's mainly because of the fact that you know, uh, we financial institutions manage large amount of uh, customer information, which includes both uh, personally identifiable as well as sensitive information. So uh, we very well know that uh, the loss uh, of this or a leakage to any of this uh, will have large financial and reputational issues uh, like Harmit uh, mentioned. So it is very imperative that every organization takes uh, effort to minimize uh, the risk. So we all know that 100% uh, protecting and protection against cyber attacks, that's very difficult. Like, you know, from an attacker's perspective, he just have to win uh, once in maybe in a lifetime, whereas uh, organizations, we have to ensure that you know, we are defending successfully at all times. So that's a, it's a challenge, it's a win-win race. So in this situation, so what is needed by every organization is to 
maintain a healthy security posture on an ongoing basis. Uh, so currently, um, uh, what we were mainly doing was that uh, point in time uh, security test checks in the form of uh, like, you know, it starts from code review to um, periodic vulnerability analysis, periodic penetration testings, various kinds of other security testings like red team, et cetera. Uh, so this, while this is being conducted by uh, most organizations, one drawback of this is uh, that these checks are a point in time activity and normally the periodicity will be like, you know, so for example, if you mention about VA, it can be on a quarterly basis or on a half yearly basis or maximum as and when the changes, the major changes happen. So uh, while we can ensure that, you know, uh, so we are reasonably foolproof at that point in time, so in the cybersecurity landscape, we all know that what we consider safe today may not be safe tomorrow. So that is one major drawback and that is where um, solutions like SAFE, which helps us to do continuous security assessment really helps. So, so this solution, uh, with, the, with the help of solutions like SAFE, we can get a real-time security posture or at least a near-time, uh, near real-time security posture of the assets which we are integrating into this tool. So that is really um, a help uh, to know about the security posture and to take timely corrective actions. So the solution, uh, so I am not going into the detail because Harmin gave a very detailed presentation of the uh, tools features. So just highlighting some of the uh, major points which uh, helps the organization are uh, this uh, visualization. So it's uh, already discussed. A single point dashboard. It helps to track us very, and that is also um, drillable. We can uh, drill down uh, to see which asset and what exactly is the vulnerability from a visualization point. Then from a quantification uh, perspective, it gives us a score on a scale of five, and uh, uh, we can know where exactly we are. Um, and that too, like uh, it has, uh, including the third party, um, uh, safe as five verticals, people, process, uh, so people, cybersecurity products, technology, and policy. So across each of the uh, component, uh, we can know the score and also the unified score across the organization. Uh, we can easily see at the click, click of a mouse. Uh, and there can be all various kind of groupings also done, which helps us to monitor uh, area-wise or geography ways. Uh, so then another important point is that you know, so, uh, not only knowing about uh, where we are, uh, conveying that to the senior management for timely information uh, decision making, that is basically informed decision making. So this tool really helps us uh, to know the position as on uh, a near real time basis. So normally organization will have some kind of scorecards which are collated from uh, using the data sourced from various sources. And that uh, um, a certain amount of manual activity will, will be involved in that uh, compilation and final score. So that normally will be maybe <clears throat> a weekly basis or on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis, something like that. So we were also following like that. Uh, so on top of that, now with the implementation of uh, SAFE, so now we are able to generate the score uh, at any point in time. For example, if I need to have, know the score now, whether it is the overall score or say like the technology component or within the technology, like now how are my endpoints uh, now uh, moving? What's the security score of that? Or how are my databases, uh, how much security is there for that? So across the component, uh, across uh, any vertical, we can see uh, and uh, uh, know where are the issues and not only that you know, we, we can know what is the kind of vulnerability existing so that you no know, we can right away go to the correct approach of uh, patching that and minimizing the risk so that is one important uh, many uh, one important area uh, where the solution helps an organization so the outcome of this is that you know, we can prioritize so where we should focus which are the uh, important areas where we need more um, rectification, et cetera, like that. So like then uh, the, this is a uh, consolidated security scorecard which will be available. Uh, so this is very helpful uh, as far as no, um, the management information is concerned. So periodically while we're reporting to the board, uh, 
uh, over to the top management, uh, it, the scores from the safe tool really helps. So even for those who are interested in logging into the solution, we can provide access to the portal. They themselves can log into the solution and uh, come to know about uh, the score across each of the verticals. That is really helpful. So this is a generic slide, which again uh, speaks about uh, the features or how the tool can be helpful for an organization. Uh, so most all the points are uh, discussed, uh, the technology security, remediation improvement. So like uh, if we say, when we say about remediation, we can integrate with the tools like Tenable Qualys, which can do the assessment. Uh, and we can get the security posture and on a near real-time basis. Or uh, if, even if not integrated, we can upload the results uh, on a regular basis at that time that it will not be a near real-time, there will be a lag. So depending upon the possibility, so what kind of integration we can do, we can uh, do that. Uh, I think I have covered how it can be helpful. Uh, Third-party assessment is uh, one area. Uh, so now it's a... Um, area where you know, much more attention by both by the regulators as well as everyone, uh, it's an evolving area. So now new terminologies like uh, that party risk management or extended risk management, et cetera, are evolving. Uh, because you know, with the kind of uh, developments that is happening across the field, like you know, for example, if you take a financial institution, so all of us now know that you know, the, it's an area where there are a lot of uh, startups are working in this uh, area. There are multiple fintechs and uh, every bank or every organization is uh, uh, tying up with those fintechs uh, trying to facilitate more and more um, facilities to the customers make uh, banking uh, online uh, on a more seamless way. So in that uh, activity, every institution comes to uh, a role where you know, there are more and more integrations with third parties are happening. The supply chain uh, is growing more and at the same time, we all know the risk now, which is faced from the supply chain side also. So in that aspect, you know, the third party assessment facility, which is recently introduced by SAFE, really helps us to know where are our uh, the supporting partners, technology service providers at uh, FinTech partners uh, from a security standpoint. So uh, the tool really helps us to get the posture in a non-intrusive manner. Uh, so uh, through which you know we can further take up with them uh, for improvement if at all any needed in that space so in that way you know uh, the tool really helps an organization to manage uh, the, the cyber security related aspects and uh, maintain a healthy posture so that's all from my side and thank you thank you so very much sir i will uh, take the liberty to just open up the qa because i believe there are several questions there. Uh, would also, uh, if there is anybody who'd like to ask a question at this point of time, I'm more than happy to take. However, in the meantime, I can start responding to these questions uh, and I can aggregate my response so that we are on time. Uh, can I just take a two second uh, poll? Is there, uh, is, is, uh, is there any question which anybody wants to ask right now? Okay, so maybe I'll start with the questions which are there in the chat box uh, in the QA section. I've just projected them here. So one of the questions is, is SAFE similar to SIM? Uh, the answer is no, SAFE uh, is not similar to SIM. The, the task of a SIM is to provide visibility into a breach, whether it has happened after the breach has happened. And a SIM is generally measured on how soon you can detect a breach through a SIM and how soon you can respond to a breach. SAFE is in contrast, something which will help you predict a breach before the breach actually happens. So many partners like ValuePoint and ValuePoint leads the curve there with us have, have, have this visionary idea of integrating the inputs or the outputs from SAFE into their SIM environment so that the SIM can be made more intelligent. And as Ashok sir pointed out in the beginning, Typically for organizations to realize the value of a SIM takes considerable amount of time and effort after the SIM is deployed. Whereas in the case of SAFE, if you deploy SAFE today, and if you onboard 10% of your assets, you'll still get a visibility of their security posture today. So the realization of value is on day one of deployment versus in the case of 
complex technologies like sim uh, like 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 sim like definitely and the grc and stuff like that the the value realization is longer so i hope i was able to answer that question uh would like to know second question from shrinivas sir is that would like to know on what metric standard does safe give score so the platform is completely standard based so we follow nist as a platform we follow fair principles we follow nice for people we follow uh, all the best practices coming from iso pci uh, hipaa and so forth so we've aggregated about 12 to 13 uh, global globally accepted uh, best practices and standards already however nist remains the the number one guiding standard because the, that's the most, most matured in terms of risk assessment uh, from that perspective from a risk calculation perspective in terms of what defines the score is also based on absolutely uh, industry standard mechanisms which are there uh, you know from a risk uh, management perspective the next question is every organization is different how can the tool arrive at the breach cost for the organization as risk for one company may not be the risk for this is a brilliant question thank you so much for putting it across this is absolutely right every organization is unique so therefore when we onboard a customer we also onboard while onboarding the customer we also get in the information about what is the geography industry and size of that customer so if i were to take you to uh, the main dashboard here and you see this uh, when we give out a score we also call out the risk profile of the customer and that risk profile of the customer is based on their geography their industry and their size and we have a team which works on uh, uh hack research so we have an input it fed into the tool that and this is coming from actually real world um, environment that what kind of customers got hacked how much cyber insurance did they have how much money did they claim from the cyber insurance partner what was the reason of the attack was it a misconfiguration or was it a vulnerability uh, you know uh, compromise what was the industry of the customer what was the geography of the customer so basis these insights that we have already fed into the tool we are able to correlate that if you are a bank your risk will be different if you are uh, a manufacturing organization your risk will be different depending on the risk profile of your business so long answer to a short question but the 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 clear answer is that yes we absolutely take into consideration the uniqueness of the organization in terms of type of technology is deployed types of processes that you follow what are the products that you have deployed in your organization what who are what kind of third parties access your organization so in that way uh, as also how uh, biju sir mentioned and coming from a ciso of a large bank it's very valuable when when a ciso is the practitioner who's deployed the product can give these value proposition across that it takes into it takes into consideration the uniqueness of your organization so uh, that's the response to that question uh, what are some of the yardsticks applied to know the breach from employees can you list some of them of course uh, the uh, some of the yardsticks are that uh, uh, for example if your if your if an employee in your finance department who's responsible for uh, uploading of the balance sheet on 1st of april or responding to the market about what's what's your what's your uh, you know uh, 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 projections going to be if that employee has a weak password or if that employee cannot differentiate between a phishing email and a non phishing email and has a, a greater likelihood of getting compromised then that's the issue if he if that employee is using passwords uh, from email ids which were common and he has lot of passwords which have already been leaked out on the deep dark web that's something which is important for the organization to have visibility about because that is risk for the organization so like that we are we are incorporating these kind of uh uh insights about the employee both from his cyber security awareness his role in the organization uh uh the the security posture of his device and the reputation of the employee uh his personal digital footprint in the deep back web these are the few of the things that we take into account while looking at what is the breachability for every employee in the organization so that is the response to that question we are on top of the hour uh for those who want who have only so much time for us i would like to thank you uh, in case you want to leave in case you want to stay back for the remaining questions as i answer them you are uh, highly welcome to do so uh anil uh, sir has asked that you do a quarterly pt and security assessment how can safe help you and what are the areas to be considered while quantifying the security risk and planning for cyber insurance okay so uh 
the first question uh, as uh, and i will take a cue from biju sir's uh, talk here that if you do a penetration testing and security assessment at points in time in your environment then your your the confidence that you have between today what is your security posture should be lesser because today security posture you don't have visibility into you know what happened 3 months back so the day you, com you completed the vapt activity you got the results after that in the last 3 months if there have been several changes in your organization these are not factored into your security profile so therefore the advantage with safe is that we can give you a near real time view of your security posture as biju sir said he can tell us right now what are the gaps in his environment which are the areas which need attention so it's a confidence that goes goes higher and that's the key value proposition of safe what are the areas to be considered while quantifying the security risk there are seven areas to be considered the geography industry and size of your organization how many employees do you have what kind of tools that they access in case of a breach what kind of data is likely to get exposed is it customer data or employee data and what type of data that is whether it's pci data pii data phi data these factors constitute to the intelligence that you need to put behind the scenes to invest into cyber insurance and also given the security posture let's say today you have most most cyber insurance policies give you today 100% coverage for ransomware but only 20% coverage for ddos uh, related uh, breaches now if you are as an organization if you are 20% breachable by ransomware but 80% breachable by by ddos then your insurance is not aligned to your security posture because the chances that you will get breached by ddos is 80% whereas your insurance coverage for a ddos attack is only only 20% of your total insured value so these are the kind of things that you need to keep in mind while investing into cyber insurance very happy to take it further for the next conversation with you how are we different from vendor who work in similar area so yes there are there are many vendors who are working in this area but to the best of our knowledge very humbly we do not know that how many vendors are there who can collect information across people process technology third parties in near real time give you not only a score also provide you a dollar value risk and an insight which and an insight which looks like how much money are you liable to lose today if you get breached today and then marry that with your cyber insurance and then also give you actionable insights that what are you required to do today so all this on a single pane of glass in one dashboard where in a matter of four clicks you can be looking at that one desktop in your environment of 10000 desktops or that one server or that one rule on that one server or one control on that one server which is bringing your security posture down so so we give a view also we give a view like this that uh, given that you have a low score uh, sorry given you that you have a low score of let's say 0.34 today which means you are almost 95% breachable you are also sitting at a $185000 loss or a $291000 loss and this can be as high as 5 million 15 million 25 million as well and given your current cyber insurance coverage what is the loss that you will the minimum loss that you will you know face in case you have an, an attack coming in and by the way for which the possibility is 95% so this is the kind of insights that we are able to provide uh what level of visibility i shared with you visibility sir we are able to provide visibility at the organization level at group le at at asset group level so for example if you say i want to assess the security posture of my erp application or for my core banking application so we can aggregate those assets or you can give us locations that give me the visibility of all my assets in bombay location versus bangalore location like that so we can give organization wide visibility we can give visibility at the a business unit or operational unit level and we can go down right to every single asset every laptop every desktop every employee every policy every third party every compliance everything we can give that visibility uh in terms of how real time so this can be as so i i would not like to say we are real time because that's not the fact but we are near real time so you can be as near real time as right now so if you want your visibility right now you can just go and click a button say generate report or you can go into this dashboard and you can see exactly what your what your score is like so your score right now is 0.34 and yesterday it was lesser and day before it was lesser so that's the kind of visibility and that's how near real time it can get right so it's it's very very near real time right and, and we have customers who are running scans even four times a day that's what product also allows but many customers are happy doing daily scans many customers are happy doing weekly 
and then depending on the appetite some do daily scan for a very critical application and a weekly scan for a lesser critical application workload so all that customization is kind of possible in between uh, how are you quantifying the risk to dollar value uh, is mr bhart's question what kind of information do you collect in order to conduct the quantitative analysis uh, what is visibility on deep web and dark web uh, how do you collect the needful data for assessment i think i'd like to pick up the this question about the anonymous attendee before going to bhart sub's question so uh the data is collected so there are four assessments that we do we do assessment of technology for which we need to do an agent based and an agent less deployment to pick up the configuration information of the assets uh and then we integrate with vulnerability tools as uh, abhijit sir also said so we can pick up the vulnerability data from there for the assessment of policies we have a policy assessment framework it is right here uh this policy assessment framework will will give you a bunch of 41 policies across 4 and 1/2 thousand controls and the policies i will let you read through look like this so you will be able to uh, assess these policies by answering to control questions and that will get populated in the tool so that's how we do policy assessment third party assessment we just need the primary domain of the third party and in less than 3 minutes we are able to give an exhaustive report of the of a completely automated absolutely non intrusive outside in scan of the customer's primary domain environment and associated and sub associated domain environment so completely automated no manual intervention there and lastly is the assessment of people so the assessment of people is done by using an application called safe me uh, safe me is an application which i would request you to download on your mobile phone it's available both on the android as well as the uh, ios platform uh, the uh, and the ios platforms and and it will open to you a world of about 150 training courses all these courses are free uh, you can you can extend this application to your family members they can they will love it uh, every every module is a 3 minute video followed by a five questions test so for example if you take uh, one of the tests that how do i use linkedin safely so the moment you click on this one it will take you to a video which will play for 3 minutes it will give you the information about what are the considerations you need to take while using linkedin safely on your mobile what changes in settings you need to do etc once you do those and once you take the number of courses that you do you start seeing a score getting built up for you the application which is non intrusive in nature just like any uh, typical application will also collect some configuration information of your uh, the basic operating system level configuration information and tell you if there are any gaps there and when you log into this application with your let's say personal id or your professional id it will actually go into the deep dark web sir so there was a question about deep dark web it will go and check that in the in the black market or in the underground market in the underground world of cyber security where the hackers communicate and where these hacker groups communicate uh, that's where most of the data gets published sold bought etc uh, that's the place where whether your email id and your password which you uh, which you used associated to that email id was ever compromised so we can give you that insight of information so if you log in with your personal email id you might find that that the password related to that email id was already compromised long time back and it's been available to the world uh, to a hacker to buy and then try to do some social media campaign on you or try to try to you know uh, con you in one way or the other so this is how we do the people assessment piece uh, i also want to take a minute uh, to talk about the fact that we can also give you a view basis our assessment uh, of how are you standing on various compliances that you might follow in your organization so we can tell you that on iso if you follow iso 27001 uh your compliance is only 7% of what the requirements of iso are this is a real time view again completely automated how much do you qualify what how much do you qualify to the requirements of nist or if you are an insurance company to irda if you are a stock broking house to sebi if you are a bank to rbi uh if you are a hospital to hipa and so forth so we have built in this framework where we can tell you that over a period of time how has your compliance been looking to iso uh, to the requirements of iso so there were points in time where you were 97 compliant there are points in time when you are only 16% compliant and what is the impact of this on your security posture is what we are able to relate and all this information eventually comes to this master dashboard over here so uh, i'm delighted to see the questions i'm really grateful to all of you uh let's take this one what would be the timeline required for doing a poc and real time deployment uh typically uh from a poc standpoint we are able to walk in and out of most pocs within 2 weeks uh and uh let's say for a 
to a 5000 range worth of an environment which has anywhere between 2000 to 5000 assets let's say 2000 employees let's say five compliances 50 third parties etc this is this is all doable with with the right level of coordination and support from the customer in provisioning the assets to us this can be easily covered i mean this is realistic to be covered uh, in a month and a half uh, but let's say if today you onboarded 20 assets you see the score of those assets assets today so uh, that was the value delivery perspective i want to go back to mr bhat's question how are you quantifying the risk to a dollar value sir uh, the way we are quantifying risk to a dollar value is this let's say you are a very large bank and you have a score of 4.5 versus there's another bank who has a score of 3.5 and that is a smaller bank than you now does this mean that the bank who has a score of 4.5 is better in the security posture or worse to the to the simple eye the answer is yes the one who has 4.5 is better because 3.5 is not uh, is is worse than 4.5 but if you peel that one layer off let's say the large bank while they are at a score of 4.5 but if that if a breach happens as let's say there there's a 20% chance of them, them getting breached and there's a 40% chance of this other bank getting the smaller bank getting breached now if the bigger bank gets breached the cost of that breach the cost of that one breach can be 50 million dollars versus for the small bank it can be let's say 10 million dollars so therefore the score itself is not the right measure it is the dollar value risk now i I'm, i'm answering why we do that first how we do that is we have information uh, which we have collated and we have live feeds from three insurance companies into our product which talk about when that what kind of customer so let's say customer x belonging to this geography belonging to this industry belonging of this size which is turnover they when, what kind of cyber insurance did they buy when they got breached how much claim did they make etc so these kind of inputs we are putting into the tool from real world data we are also importing inputs from globally accepted reports like verizon date of date, uh, a breach investigation report data breach investigation report the ibm cost of a breach report so let's say ibm says that the average cost of a breach today is 4.2 million dollars so so you know those kind of inputs are all that we have collated so wherever there is a credible source in the world which talks about what is the cost of a security breach whether that is based on analysis like uh, the one done by verizon and, and ibm we will incorporate that and we will also get the real world data that okay i know so many customers who act because i am i we work very closely with the insurance companies because of our cyber insurance uh, value proposition so because there are so many we we have this insights of customers who have been attacked and then when they claim cyber insurance so that also information comes in. so so these this forms the basis of how do we quantify risk to a dollar value and uh, i shared with you the information that we collect uh, to conduct the quantitative analysis we need the configuration information of your technology landscape we need the vulnerability information we need the cyber security awareness information of people we need how you are running your policies uh, while you govern your cyber security and we need insights around how your third parties how risky are your third parties so we put all these things together to give you this quantification that we give out um uh, okay uh timeline i answered okay do you also provide assessment on osint based information i am sorry i do not have the answer to this question i will take this question uh, back home and i'll i'll have a response to this question subsequently uh i think i have i hope i have answered all the questions uh, there is one question harmit that yes, uh, we'll close with this uh, risk yes, profile sir. is created in system for every industry is what you are saying how many industries are covered and how often and by what approach is this profile updated assuming here that the risk profile is the major driver to generate risk score so the minimum update cycle that we have is one quarter because the product gets released every quarter but if there are any critical updates during the quarter we can we can we can do that update there there as well but the worst case situation is once in a quarter great so um i think uh, uh, this is the first time we have overstretched by 15 <laughs> minutes and uh, i really see still uh, 55 participants out of the total 73 we had and i really appreciate uh, you standing by today and um, i definitely believe that the session was uh, uh, informative and uh, it really gave a little different dimension to the conversation uh, than uh, picking up a particular uh, you know product and talking about the features of the product 
it's all about impacting your cybersecurity journey. And uh, we would be happy to have this conversation with you as we progress. Please reach out to our account managers. And uh, if you wish to have a specific conversation on how we can build a roadmap uh, with you over the next three years, uh, and also we can uh, discuss uh, the overall offerings as a part of our managed security services, how we can really impact your cybersecurity journey so that you have an effective response back to the board, right? So, uh, uh, Harmit, do you have anything to conclude or uh, are we good to conclude? No, sir, I have only my, my gratefulness to extend to both the customers who spent uh, almost 46 minutes on this call, sorry, 60, 76 minutes on this call today. And to you, uh, uh, our, our most valuable partner, I can arguably say for the country today, who's helping us access these customers. And it is all your magic, sir. I mean, even I have seen for the first time that the attendee count just kept on steadily going up and it's at almost 47, 48, what I saw last. So yeah. thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for, for your patronage and for your sponsorship. And we are delighted to have the opportunity to address these customers with our joint value proposition. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you for thank joining. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. There were some more questions, I believe. Like, for example, there's one called since associates are working from home, I think we didn't. So maybe we can just, Mr. Bijoy Mamachan has asked this question. So maybe we could send out a response to Shok, sir. Uh, yes, I think we should do that. Yeah. Anji, we'll do that. Chaliye, thank you so much, Ji. Yeah, bye. Great day. Bye bye.